hello and welcome back and that is right today i want to talk about these two ssd brands and hopefully help you decide which one you should go for before we go any further i should touch on a few disclaimers real quick first and foremost this video is going to be me talking about the highlights and the lowlights of their respective hardware architectures if you want to see live benchmarks and lots of performance measurements on these two drives i have covered it in extensive detail here on the channel in their own standalone reviews i've done performance benchmarks on our mid-range pc i've done ps5 tests ps5 test comparisons all of that is on the backlog. Today, I'm going to refer to some of those results and the official results in this quick overview in the help in the hope of helping you decide which one's best for your needs. But if you come to this video looking for very specific benchmarks, check out the catalog, check out the playlist. They are all there. Next, I want to remind you all during this that although we are looking at the Samsung 980 Pro here, when we're looking at the WD drive, we are looking at the SN850X. This is really important because a lot of you might be looking at that and thinking it's this, the SN850. This came out in 2020 and we will be referring to it later in the video, but this is about in right now recording in August 2022, if you are looking to buy a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, whether you should go for the SN850X or the Samsung 980 Pro, because these two brands have been right there at the top, not only at the very beginning of the 7K um, uh, PCIe Gen 4 generation, but have persisted and continued to go there. They both have a very similar brand rhetoric with regards to architecture, output, and what their drives are designed towards, but also when it comes to brand, uh, users that go, I only buy branded goods, I only go for the big brands out there, Samsung and Western Digital in the world of SSDs are right bloody up there and only a Seagate and maybe the, the mm, Toshiba to a degree but I doubt it that live higher on the plane of storage so bear that in mind but without further ado let's crack on now the reason I'm comparing these two SSDs not just because they're popular is because both of them have suffered kind of um, their own kind of pithic victory slash losses now by that, what I mean is, back in um, autumn, winter 2022, when the PCIe 4 generation was still incredibly, uh, 2020, back when the PCIe 4 generation was incredibly green, at that point, these two brands released the fastest commercial grade SSDs in the market. That was the 980 Pro and the SN850. These two drives arrived on the scene with 7,000 megabytes per second and a pinch above in their drives there with a wide variety of capacities and blowing everyone out of the water up to that point who were mainly um, Seagate and Sabrent had been ruling the roost at that point with their 5K SSDs. Now, that was 2020 and the rest of the market went, whoa, that is insane. However, it's been two years, and in those two years, many, many competitors have come along. Not only uh, competitors who arrived on the scene by saying, we're doing faster SSDs, which they did, with SSDs arriving at 7,100, 7,002, 7,003, 7,004 in some places as well. But on top of that, improved write performance as well, creeping in the IOPS, and ultimately taking advantage of third-party brands like InnoGrit and Fizon and third-party memory manufacturers uh, like um, Adata, um, SK Hynix, Micron and more who were providing their expertise, their research and development, their architecture to third-party companies to build their own SSDs. When they arrived, again, the Seagates, the Sabrents, the Team Groups, the Adatas, the Viper Patriots, all of these different SSDs arrived which smashed these brands out of the water in terms of performance. Now, they were still holding onto the scene with their brand loyalty, their great worldwide dominance and availability, and of course, because they arrived in the scene earlier, they arrived with better pricing as well, with more regular deals, better control of their stock and availability and pricing globally, and ultimately, that's what kept them in the picture. But in 2022, things were not looking as rosy. Now, the way both of these brands went about it while I'm doing this story time hour on these two brands, they both went about it slightly different ways. And arguably, WD did it better, in my opinion. Samsung, with their Samsung 980 Pro here, didn't release a newer, faster SSD. They did some tweaks in the firmware to get a little bit more performance, but then everyone was doing that. What they did 
was released the same drive with a new heatsink. And then everyone went, great. Because it was a nice heatsink and it is a good heatsink. And once again, I've done the benchmarks. You can find it on the channel. We did our tests and our full review of that. But the fact still remains, it's largely the same SSD with a new heatsink on it. WD, on the other hand, diversified the WD Black portfolio. They kept that SSD available. I'm oh, sorry, the um, old SSD available. But then they added two new WD tiers, the SN7700, which is a slower, more affordable version that's DRAMless. Again, reviewed benchmark, blah, blah, on the channel. And then they released this, a faster version of the SN850, known as the SN850X. Now, the SN850X cracks 7,300 megabytes per second performance and 6,600 megabytes per second uh, performance in write there as well, with other improvements that we'll touch on later on. But the result was... WD were able to create a much more fluid portfolio within the WD Black series and PCIe Gen 4 exceeding 7,000. And the result is that right now, in terms of price, the WD is winning it. The WD is not only the better price in its default drive, the first generation model, but even now they're fleshing out the portfolio, you can see they're doing a much better structured pricing across their portfolio. Samsung, on the other hand, although more affordable than it was in 2020, it hasn't really moved the goalpost that much. And including the new heatsink version, rather than bringing down the price of the older stock, what they did is make the heatsink more expensive. So it's actually quite an expensive heatsink as well. And the result is that you get the impression what Samsung are doing are doubling down on the 980 Pro. Maybe they'll release a plus version or a 990, who knows? But what's more likely is they are focusing more on the PCIe Gen 5 generation, which already we're seeing some brands show off their SSDs, but almost all of them are using the same controller, the Fizon E26. And we're seeing them all, once again, relying on those third-party components. But you do get the impression that these two brands are the ones that are looking to be the biggest splash at the PCIe Gen 5 generation, with Samsung seemingly focusing all of its energy on that, with WD focusing a lot of energy on that, but clearly spending a little bit of time to keep the PCIe Gen 4 ball in the in, uh, ball in the air because of things like the pandemic and COVID and hardware shortages and semiconductor shortages resulting in the Gen 4 generation seemingly lasting longer at the top than most people would have anticipated in 2022. Now, in terms of value and what you're getting for money, these two are actually incredibly similar, with both of them arriving with in-house components. They both use controllers that are developed by their own teams and subsidiaries. Same goes with the NAND, going with the memory to a more or less a degree, more for Samsung there. But the result is they developing the SSD internally means that it's a much more focused geared product. I talked about this in my Fire CUDA comparison with um, WD there. It's the ability to rather than use third party components which need to have a certain broad scope of utilization so they can be applied to different architecture and setups, the WD and the Samsung drive have a controller that is designed for that SSD architecture. Consequently, it can be way more focused in what it can do. And although the benefits in sequential performance are very minimal, the benefits later on that we'll talk about in IOPS are huge overall. The result is that because they both use in-house uh, controllers and R&D, the price point, the structure of pricing, the availability, as already touched on, is great on both of these drives. You will generally always find them in stock, and when they aren't in stock, no one else is in stock. Blame things like Chia last year for that. But now, you can't really distinguish between them because they're both great value. They both arrive with their own in-house SSD. They both arrive with 7K performance and improved performance. But it is that performance that we're going to talk about now where things change quite dramatically. Because once again, because the Samsung 980 Pro sat on its laurels a little bit with some firmware updates along the way, the WD Black SN850X just blows it out of the water in both read and write. In terms of write especially, massively overshooting the five to five and a half thousand of the Samsung, the WD is cracking six, 6,600. And even in my mid-range until um, 11th Gen i5 testing, it still went well in excess of 6,600 megs. Now, in terms of IOPS, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, what that is, IOPS, the WD Black wins again for similar but improved reasons. An IOP 
in terms of measurement. When we've mentioned megabytes per second up to this point, that's kind of big, blocky, bulky data. That is big gain data, huge cabs, just data all in a row, sequential. Now, 4K IOPS, the reason that term is used, 4K is considered like the smallest possible thing in terms of data scale, and random means the data is being pulled from all over the internal NAND on that SSD. Now, that means the IOP measurement is saying how many maximum of the smallest operation can be performed on these SSDs per second. And between the two of them, as mentioned, the WD Black wins there. They were already ahead of most other brands in the IOPS performance on the WD Black SN850, but with the X version, they absolutely nail it. With the majority of the capacities cracking the 1 mil mark, getting as high as 1.2 and 1.1 million 4K IOP rating there officially on there. Even in my conservative, modest testing, we still broke the million in read IOPS without really breaking much of a sweat. Now, the Samsung still does well and can break the million, but nowhere near as confidently and as widespread across the capacities as that of the 980 Pro. And while we're on the subject of capacities, it's worth highlighting that the WD Black SN850 is available in four terabytes, something not available on the 980 Pro there, which is really surprising. Now that the cost of PCIe Gen 4 generation SSDs has come down, a lot of users have gone, eh, crack another terabyte on there and hitting the 4TB. So again, the WD Black confidently wins. Performance there, capacity there, pricing there and although value is even between the two of them the SN850X is making a lot more sense now it should be said that in terms of actual price if you remove the heatsink from the equation this is going to cost you less money not a lot less money but it's still the lower price of the two there but as we move away from this let's talk about one figure which seemingly very little has changed and that's durability and endurance these how long these drives are going to last in your system, be it your console, your PC, your flash server, your fabric, whatever. And the, both of these are rated at 0 0.3 drive writes per day, or 150, 300, 600, 1200, or 2400 terabytes written, depending on capacities. They're very even in their um, overall lifespan of utilization alongside a five-year warranty. Although I will argue the WD Black seemingly has a higher mean time between failure, something I don't really take much you know, a notice off, but I know there are still a small contingent of people that do measure MTBF, that kind of live, alive, alive, dead, replace, alive, what's that time difference? Um, but in terms of durability, there is little between these two drives. But despite there being little between them, it's also worth highlighting that they've got the same durability, but this drive has a higher performance level there. That's really important. Yes, it still equates to the same data, but having that lifespan being the same, but this drive being a higher performer within its lifespan is a good thing. And although it's an incredibly negligible and dare I say nebulous difference, it does give it the tiniest edge. And if no big factors come across more and more in this video, over and over while I'm hitting you over the head with a stick about it, it is that the WD Black SN850X beats the Samsung 980 in practically every way. And only if, and even then, that's a big if, you are a PS5 user that's only going to be using this for casual to mid-level gaming, that's the only reason why I would recommend the 980 Pro overall. Because in every other regard, the WD Black SN850 is the better choice. And although in PS5 gaming, the only reason I don't give it the edge is because the PS5 can't take advantage of that high right, high right IOPS and more, it's still a better SSD overall for PC gamers, for console streamers, esports, content creators, post production, caching. It wins all of those. And even if you are a PS5 gamer that goes, oh, but I wanted to get it for the PS5. Then you go for the SN850X, which for a reason is now the official PS5 upgrade drive in the market right now. It's rebranded, Sony logo, the works. And that's really it. This has been comparing the Samsung 980 Pro versus the WD Black SN850X. If you have enjoyed this or found it useful, click like in the description. It really helps me know what I'm doing right and wrong in these videos. And... Ever since YouTube basically nuked that dislike button to be in any way useful to anyone, creators and watchers alike, likes matter now for us to understand what we're doing right and wrong. 
If you want to learn more as we talk more and more about these SSDs and more, click subscribe and use the free advice section and the link in the description to the comparison on these drives linked below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.